Hello all. Very good morning. So we were discussing regarding the valvular heart diseases. And in today's topic, I would like to discuss you regarding the aortic regurgitation. So I have discussed regarding the aortic stenosis. And I have discussed regarding the mitral wall stenosis, mitral wall regurgitation and mitral wall prolapse. So if you want to check the other videos, you can go to the playlist and you can check in the cardiovascular diseases. So in today's topic, I will discuss you what is regurgitation. What is this aortic regurgitation? So regurgitation means nothing but the backflow. And if you see this aortic regurgitation here, the blood which has entered into the aorta through the left ventricle, it is coming back. So here, the blood from the left atrium is entering into the left ventricle. And if you see the circulation, it has to enter into the arch of aorta and towards, towards the body. But the blood which has entered into the arch of aorta due to the valvular dysfunction what is happening it is again re-entering into the left ventricle which is causing lot of differences here for example if you see in arch of iota the normal pressure is 120 by 80 so if it is 125 by 80 due to the pressure variations here the blood cannot enter into the left ventricle again it will go because here in the left ventricle the systolic pressure is high and the diastolic pressure is very low but in case of aortic regurgitation, what is happening here automatically the systolic pressure it is increasing instead of 120 it is going for 160 and diastolic pressure it is coming down so instead of 60 sorry instead of 80 it is coming down to 60 which is causing the blood again to re-enter into the left ventricle and here if you see the systolic pressure the systolic pressure is also increasing as well as the diastolic pressure is also increasing which is causing the blood to pull in the left ventricle and it is causing the left ventricular hypertrophy so this is nothing but the blood which has entered into the arch of iota it should not come back but due to the disease condition due to the damage the pressure gradation is occurring and the blood it is re-entering into the ventricle which is called as aortic regurgitation so there are different types of causes so we have valvular causes and we have other types of causes such as hypertension or marfan syndrome or spondylitis so these are some of the disease type of causes and we have valvular causes whenever there is rheumatic heart fever then the person is having this valvular diseases and uh, infective endocarditis degenerative calcification or any kind of trauma or aortic root disease so these are all some of the valvular causes which is ca causing the aortic regurgitation and other disease conditions are hypertension Marfan syndrome and spondylysis. Coming to the pathophysiology. So here if you see the pathophysiology whenever due to this predisposing factors due to this all causes if the aortic valve has been failed here there will be as we have we are discussing the more blood is pooling in the left ventricle. So what is happening here the left ventricular hypertrophy is occurring and the left ventricular stroke volume it is increasing. So ultimately what is happening due to the increased stroke volume it cannot maintain the cardiac output means the blood which has to enter into the systemic circulation it is not entering it is pulling back again. So what will happen there will be it cannot what will happen it, it cannot maintain the cardiac output so whenever the cardiac output is not maintained here it is increasing the end diastolic pressure so if you see the picture here what is happening so because of the back pulling of the blood so, so what happened in the arch of aorta the end diastolic pressure is decreased and in the left ventricle the end diastolic pressure is increasing so with the increased end diastolic pressure there will be left ventricular dilatation as well as hypertrophy and again when there is left ventricular dilatation and when there is hypertrophy, what will happen due to the increased pressure? If you see the, the pressure of the left atrium, it is in the lower side and the pressure in the left ventricle, is, it is in the higher side. So, what will happen? Again, there, it will enter into the left atrium and it will cause pulmonary damage. So, this is the aortic regurgitation. That's what the pathophysiology is. It is very simple. Whenever the aortic valve is failed, so what will happen the blood will be more accumulated in the left ventricle so if the blood if the cardiac output is not maintained ultimately the diastolic the end diastolic pressure is increasing when the end diastolic pressure is increased the left ventricular dilatation and hypertrophy occur and ultimately the left atrium is also getting affected and lastly the pulmonary system is being damaged so this is the pathophysiology of aortic regurgitation coming to the clinical manifestations so we have acute clinical features as well as we have chronic re clinical features in acute clinical features you can observe dyspnea so here there will be sudden dyspnea and you can observe the transient chest pain 
and also there will be progression to the shock for the patient and if you see the chronic clinical features the patient experiences fatigue there will be exertional dyspnea and also you can see the corrigan sizes this corrigan sign is nothing but the abnormal pulse felt on the coronary artery so these are the some of the clinical features that you can observe in the pulmonary aortic regurgitation so there are specific signs in the aortic regurgitation so what are the specific sign means we have muller sign so this muller sign there will be systolic pulsation that were observed near the vulva we have dancing carotids and they are calling it and nextly we have d muset sign and there will be quinky sign there will be trobe sign coming to the dancing carotids so here due to the pressure difference due to the pressure differences in the aortic wall you can observe this carotid pulsation so there there will be prominent carotid pulsations mainly due to the wide pulse pressure in the aortic regurgitation it is called as corrigan sign and nextly we have d muset sign so there will be head nodding sign and we have finke sign where you can find the nail bed capillary pulsation so in finke sign you are mainly feeling the nail bed capillary pulsations and lastly if you see there will be trobe sign so this trobe sign is nothing but near the femoral arteries and sometimes over the brachial arteries you will hear a sound which will be like pistol shot sound so these are some of the specific signs that are there in this aortic regurgitation coming to the investigation part so we will go for routine physical examination and history collection we will go for chest x ray we will go for ecg and we'll do through cardiac catheterization we'll see the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and we'll see the left uh, arterial pressure and we'll go for the echocardiogram so these are some of the routine investigations that were performed in the valvular heart diseases coming to the medical management so so if the person is asymptomatic and if there is mild and moderate atrial regurgitation and if the left ventricle is normal so here the person he has to come for routine checkup for every 1 to 2 years with this echocardiogram and if the person is staying asymptomatic with severe atrial regurgitation and if the person is having this normal left ventricle so here for every 6 months he has to come for the follow up and at any time if the symptoms are interfering with the person at this time also he has to visit the nearest hospital and nextly we are giving them the loop diuretics as well as digoxin mainly to prevent this congestive cardiac failure and we are giving them the vasodilator so we are giving them the ac inhibitor and we are giving them the calcium channel blockers so these they are used mainly in the aortic regurgitation and during the anginal chest pain so we are treating the patients mainly with the nitrates and whenever you are using the beta blockers they should be used with caution so this is the medical management and surgical management we will go for the balloon aortic valvoplasty and aortic wall replacement the same same like aortic stenosis so they will and through the guide wire they will place a catheter near the aortic wall they will inflate the balloon and they will wide open the pathway so this is the surgical management mainly for this uh, aortic regurgitation hope you understood this is very simple so if you have any queries please drop them in the comment box thank you so much for watching if you like the content please like share and subscribe the channel and try to comment your suggestions in the comment box so that i can correct myself thank you